Incredible archaeological discoveries are our bread and butter on this channel. We're always looking for them. And every time we find one, it gets logged and marked for inclusion in a video like this. We've put together yet another video tour of phenomenal ancient artifact discoveries, and we're ready to serve it to you now. We hope you enjoy it. Scientists in Peru got a grisly surprise in October 2021 when they re-examined a gold death mask that was found in a Sikkim culture tomb more than 30 years ago. The mask, along with the skeletal remains of the tomb's occupant, was covered in a type of red paint. The paint was long assumed to be red ochre, which was used in many ancient burials all over the world, for reasons we don't understand. A chemical analysis of the paint has revealed that it isn't red ochre. Instead, it's a mixture of bird egg proteins and human blood. The Sikkim culture predates the Inca in Peru, flourishing between the 9th and 14th centuries on the country's north coast. They peaked during the 10th and 11th centuries, during which they produced stunning gold objects using metallurgy techniques that were advanced for the time. Unfortunately, the blood is degraded to the point where we can't say whether the blood came from the person buried in the tomb. Historians suspect that painting the bones with blood might have been a symbolic representation of rebirth into the afterlife. But that's only a theory. Our next discovery takes us to Iraq, where archaeologists found an ancient wine press covered in beautiful carvings in October 2021. The discovery comes from the archaeological site of Kinnis in the north of the country and was found at the bottom of a stone-cut pit dating to the reign of the Assyrian ruler Sennacherib 2,800 years ago. Similar stone bas-reliefs, which are thought to show kings praying to the gods, have been found in the walls of a six-mile-long irrigation canal nearby. Large-scale rock relics have been found elsewhere in Iraq before, most notably in Kurdistan. But they can't match these recent finds for the size or quality. All seven key gods of the Assyrian pantheon are represented, topped by Ishtar, the goddess of love, but also of war, perched atop a lion. The pits have been interpreted as stone basins used during commercial winemaking. That would make this one of the world's oldest wine factories, with 14 installations for pressing grapes and extracting juice. The presence of the kings both here and on the canal might be propaganda, reminding people who they should thank for the creation of the facilities. When a Danish metal detectorist found this bust on the island of Falster in 2015, she thought it was a relatively recent piece because it was in such good condition. She was amazed when she took it to the National Museum of Denmark for examination by professional archaeologists who told her that her lucky find was a bronze bust of Silenus from the first century. The bust is tiny, measuring less than two inches tall. Silenus, a god who was said to be the tutor of Dionysus, is portrayed in a less than flattering light. He's old, bald, bearded, and he has a squash nose. His strange expression might be a suggestion that he's drunk. Despite frequently being portrayed as a wise god, he's also represented as a drunk, often riding naked on a mule. Archaeologists think that the bust was once attached to a lectus, a special couch, which the Romans would recline on after enjoying a hearty meal with plenty of wine. Given what the god was known for, he'd have been a perfectly appropriate choice for a decoration of that kind. Pompeii is the most famous archaeological site in the world. So archaeologists in Britain must have known they'd draw attention in 2016 when they announced the discovery of a site they called the Pompeii of Britain in Cambridgeshire. This site is properly known as Must Farm and is on the banks of the River Nene. Many fantastic archaeological discoveries have been made here in the years since 2016, including circular wooden houses and a clay quarry. At 3,000 years old, the houses are among the oldest and best preserved of all the Bronze Age dwellings ever uncovered on the British Isles. Based on the evidence at the scene, archaeologists have concluded that the settlement was destroyed by a fire and then collapsed into the riverbed. The river silt then preserved the charred remains of the buildings, enabling archaeologists to find them all these years later. 
The houses were built on stilts with separate areas for cooking and preparing food and roofs made of wooden rafters covered in clay and turf. A 3,000-year-old wooden wheel has also been found here, which makes a mockery of the assumption that the people who lived here relied purely on the river for transportation. When archaeologists find an ancient sword, the weapons are usually so worn and rusty that the blades have become dull. That makes this sword, which was found in Denmark in 2020, very special indeed. Upon hearing that an old sword has been found in Denmark, most people would assume a connection to the Vikings. They'd usually be correct, but not on this occasion. The sword is 3,000 years old, which places it long before the Viking era and makes it all the more remarkable that it's still sharp. The discovery was made by two amateur metal detectorists on the Danish island of Zealand. The sword is bronze, and the bronze used in its construction is thought to have been imported from somewhere in Central Europe. It once had a leather grip on its handle, but that rotted away long ago. The surviving pommel and hilt, though, display intricate and advanced bronze work with elaborate decorations. It would certainly have been expensive and might even have been so expensive that it was never used in battle. Whoever owned this sword probably wanted to make a statement about their status more than they wanted to wield it against an enemy. The historians who live on Earth about a hundred years from now are likely to wonder why the people of our era and the century or so before us thought so little of the Neanderthals. We portray them in fiction and also in some history books as grunting primitives barely more advanced than apes. But it's becoming increasingly obvious that they were just as sophisticated as early Homo sapiens. In fact, they achieved a degree of sophistication far earlier than our species did. We can see proof of that in these decorated eagle talons, which are likely to have been worn as jewelry. They were undoubtedly made by Neanderthal hands, and those Neanderthals lived an amazing 130,000 years ago. Catching an eagle isn't easy or safe, so the mere fact that the Neanderthals could catch them and obtain the talons is proof that they had sophisticated hunting methods. The artifacts were found more than 100 years ago in a rock shelter in Krapina, Croatia, but they were assumed to be human relics, and their age wasn't proven until a new study in 2021. Decorating the talons is clear evidence of symbolic thought and expression, which are traits that historians once thought Neanderthals to be incapable of. The archives of old universities are a good place for researchers to go looking for discoveries because the things that were placed in those archives centuries ago often weren't processed or labeled properly. In 2015, a researcher at the University of Birmingham in England decided to open up an old box out of curiosity and found a few fragments of the Quran. There isn't much of the original manuscript left, just a few tattered pages and scraps, but it's sufficient material for carbon dating the results of the carbon dating test that the researcher had performed on the scraps are shocking. The pages which are scratched onto goat skin are 1,375 years old. That makes this one of the oldest Qurans in the world, and possibly even the outright oldest. It dates back to the beginnings of Islam as a religion. The author of these pages would have been alive at the same time as the Prophet Muhammad. It's possible that he might even have met the prophet in person and written these pages under his guidance. It's thought that the unlabeled box had been in the archive for at least a century before this discovery. Nobody knows how it got there. There's a place in Luxor, Egypt that's known as the Avenue of Sphinxes. It turns out that not everything on the avenue is a sphinx. In October 2021, archaeologists announced the discoveries of giant ram heads at the site, which isn't far from the famous Karnak Temple. There are three ram heads in total, one of which is depicted with a cobra on the top of its head for unknown reasons. The temple is believed to be more than 3,000 years old, and these ram heads were most likely made at around the same time. That would mean they were already here when the Avenue of Sphinxes was built about 2,200 years ago. They might even have been destroyed to make way for the avenue. 
That would explain why they now lack the bodies that archaeologists think they were once attached to. The bodies would probably have been sphinx-like in design, so it's possible that the ancient builders simply removed the goat heads and then placed sphinx heads on the bodies in their place to save time. The newly discovered heads will be cleaned, restored, and then placed on public display. This ancient gold jog, known as a ewer, is simply stunning to look at. You don't have to be an archaeologist or an antique expert to know that an object like this has to be valuable. It's hard to believe that it's more than 4,200 years old. The priceless artifact was in the news recently when it was returned back home to Anatolia, Turkey. It was once part of the Gilbert Collection in London's Victoria and Albert Museum, but the museum has recently been trying to clean up its art collection. It's appointed experts to identify any exhibits that might have been acquired through looting, and this is one of the most significant artifacts identified as such so far. The museum acquired it from the Los Angeles-based dealer Arthur Gilbert in 1989, and it's now an accepted fact that Gilbert traded in illicit stolen artifacts. Records show that Gilbert was paid £250,000 for the ewer, a sum equivalent to more than £600,000 today. The artifact is Anatolian in origin, and the circumstances of its departure from its home country are unknown. There is no record of its export or sale. Visit the Bayer Museum of Time in Zurich, Switzerland, and you'll see an artifact that looks a lot like an ornate snow globe with a tiny clock inset into its stand. You'd probably think it was the most beautiful snow globe you've ever seen, but to describe it as such would be to do it a disservice. There is no snow globe. It's a planetarium clock made in Paris during the 1770s, and it's both a work of art and a masterpiece of engineering. The basic clock face means it can tell you the time, but the globe contains a scale model of our solar system or at least the solar system as it was understood in the 1770s. The rotations of the Earth around the Sun happen in real time, and the movements of the other five planets inside the globe are mostly accurate too. The snowy effect comes from the stars delicately etched onto the outside of the crystal glass, which represent the constellations. The museum holds timepieces and other methods of measuring time, dating as far back as 3,400 years ago, but we doubt it holds anything more elaborate and stunning than this. The Corlec head might be a representation of the old Irish god Crum Dub, said by legend to have been buried up to his neck for three days. The emphasis is on the word maybe, though. That's the best interpretation of historians. In truth, we have no idea what it's supposed to represent. If we focus on the facts, though, we can tell you that it's about 1,900 years old and was discovered in 1855 in County Cavan. It immediately attracted attention because of its three faces. That gives it one more face than the Roman god Janus, which might not be a coincidence. There's an ancient shrine reflecting shared Romano-Irish traditions not far from where the head was found. Each of the three faces is different. One has heavy eyebrows, another has little more than a slit for a mouth, whereas the third has an open hole where the mouth should be. The theory about the head being crumbed up doesn't make much sense in this context because the deity is typically represented as having just one face. This is a mystery we might never get to the bottom of. A little over 10 years ago, a rare and valuable Viking helmet was stolen from Romania shortly after its discovery. The country's archaeologists feared that the find was gone forever, but it was finally tracked down by the country's police in February 2021. Thankfully, it doesn't appear to have been damaged during its time in criminal hands. The helmet dates to the 11th century and was found in the muddy banks of Romania's River Siret in 2010. Photographs of the find were taken at the time, but it didn't even make it as far as the nearest museum before someone stole it and hid it away. The police didn't have a single lead to go on until December 2020 when an anonymous tip started the process that eventually led to its recovery. Viking helmets like this one are usually only found in locations in the Baltics. 
This one might have ended up in Romania after being traded through Kiev Rus, an early incarnation of the state of Russia. Kiev Rus was founded by the Vikings 1100 years ago, a fact that isn't well known even in Russia. That's speculation, though. The important fact is that the helmet is now back in the right hands. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.